Right, good evening. How's everyone doing? Yeah, great. All right, and it's a pretty good group to start with, and I'm sure there will be many more. So there are some, some groups there for the new joiners there. Uh, but it's great to see everyone is sitting in, a, in sort of a group. We might have to get you to a, a, a nicer uh, group if needed. Uh, but Brian and his team will do that. Uh, we're just letting you know. Um, so to get started, there are lots and lots of events uh, that, that we have done in the past, and uh, it's been four and a half years now that we've been doing this. Um, the purpose of this meetup is to get people together in person. Right? I could have done this like a FaceTime or, or a Facebook Live or for you to sip coffee at, at your, you know, in your balcony or, or a nice uh, backyard and, and do this event or at least watch this event, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is to all of us get together here. You guys are all over from the industry, so if you meet people, there are lots of other creative juices that flow and the good, nice mismatch, uh, some, some nice cross-pollination happening. So that's what we want and that's why, why we exist here. And you're part of that, so um, it's amazing. Who all uh, are the first timers? Whoa, that's great! Super, welcome. Super. So this event is all charged up with with lots of activities. As you can see, there are lots of volunteers here that uh, Brian has has got with him, and they are all charged up to to do stuff here and and you know get this room charged up with with uh, different activities, different groups, different, different, uh, uh, different games, so that we could learn a lot. Yeah. Um, so a few small little things, how we do things is we start, start about six o'clock, uh, and we go over the presentation, we take a break at about quarter to seven for about 15 minutes, um, give and take, about quarter to six to about seven, so that we're keeping it flexible there, but we'll take a 15 minute break, uh, we come back and uh, we do lightning talks. So if you're the first timers, you might be wondering what that is. Lightning talk is nothing but a three minute presentation by any of the audience, right? Not from me, not from the featured speaker, you. So think about three minutes, what do you want to talk? Any agile topic is welcome, okay? anything. Three minutes, not a big deal. Whatever you, you're experiencing, the, the training you had, or the interaction you had that was a great aha moment for you, you want to speak here three minutes, I'm gone, boom, right? One small, one small experience you share here. Plus, you're standing on the stage, people want to know you, you get a bigger network on LinkedIn. How about that, right? It's, it's a free, uh, free nice part for you to, to talk here. Um, and then, so these are three of them. Um, so three minutes, three, that means nine, one minute buffer, so we're gonna do this 10 minute activity. Um, what we do is during the break, you come to me with a sticky note, your name, and the title of your talk, okay? And if you're among those lucky three, you get to speak here. Okay? So sincerely, think about sharing something with the community, just like we're doing here, okay? We are all sharing here. So. Try that, and that would, that, that would be a great uh, one because you know all of us are here not just to learn the, the biggest knowledge that we're going to get tonight, but also these three uh, nice brownie points that we get, right? And there are a lot of good uh, experience sharing people have had here, so I'm really hoping that, that three of you will come on the stage and, and talk. Then, um, at about 7.15 or 7.30, depending on when we take the, the break, we come and do the uh, presentation or the activity, whatever we are doing at the time, uh, for another 45 minutes. And we uh, kind of go into takeaways and retrospectives in the last 15 minutes, and then we adjourn at 8.15. Any questions on the agenda? Okay, great. All right, with that, um, here, is, here is what I know about the speaker. So, so Brian has been coming just like you here, um, as well as uh, while this this meetup was done in South Bay. So he's to come, you know, come regularly to to this meetup as audience. 
Um, and, and from that, once he said, I want to talk, I have a great topic, so he's come here previously, I think it was about two years ago, kind of, two years ago. A year ago, ago and I did one of your lightning talks. Yeah, there you go, he has done lightning talks as well. So he's part of us, think about it, you could be that one in next one year, standing here, right? It's a great platform. So, um, Brian, I have seen Brian, uh, Brian's ideas, and they are always very innovative, very energetic, okay? And uh, I've also found someone working with us right here on the fifth floor with me who has actually wor worked for Brian, and uh, she was really vouching for, for Brian's ability. She's seen uh, Brian uh, uh, work and, and change the room, uh, if you will, uh, wherever she worked with him. So it's, it's great to have uh, these kind of speakers. I really love speakers when they're from all of us. Right? They're, they're amazing people. Um, sometimes I have to get people from out station, and I, I do my job to do that. Um, so, and, and we'll talk about the next speaker as well towards the end of the event. But with that, Brian, here you are on the stage. <clears throat> All right, well, welcome, and we're going to have a lot of fun. This is going to be very interactive, very hands-on. We're going to get you out of your seats and it's going to be a good time. So uh, with that said, we're here to talk about how leadership can form an agile ecosystem. And uh, the F, the O, the R, and the M is an acronym, and you'll see what that uh, stands for. We'll ask for a brave volunteer at the end after we go through this to get up and say without any slides what that stands for. So welcome to that job. And uh, so I've got an embarrassing number of certifications. I'll just call out that I you know, run this company called Matchability, and I recently, about three months ago, became the VP of Agile Transformation Services for another company called Romagile. And um, I'm currently contracting, consulting with uh, Cisco, which is where I started off uh, four years ago. I came here from Ohio, where it's much colder, except for it's kind of cold today. But um, I, I came from very cold Ohio, uh, four years ago for oops, um, four years ago for transformation, and um, so I, I did that for about six months. Went on to be the agile transformation director for uh, the Norton Business Unit of uh, Semantic, and it keeps on it auto advancing. I think I know what's auto advancing. All right, so I might have to stop and do a setting change there. But um, I've led transformations for NASDAQ and uh, for Capital One, Credential, and Mickey, Mickey, um, a real Mickey Mouse organization called Walt Disney. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And I see that setting it does need to get turned off, so hold on just a second. <laughs> Signed up for this, you probably saw that in the, the write up. And um, about a year ago, version one came out with this uh, report and uh, it said leading causes of failed agile projects and uh, barriers to further agile adoption. And it's kind of hard to see from far away, but the, the underlined, with underlined words are culture, management support, cultural transition, organizational culture. Are you seeing a theme here? Culture, organization, and management. So the the, or, the uh, transformation usually gets stuck at the leadership level. You, you make good, pretty quick progress at the team level, but in my experience, uh, I've seen that uh, the transformations get stuck, and the eleven giants are related to everything from management to culture. So um, with that said, we've come up with something called the Agile Mentoring Program. And in the Agile Mentoring Program, we've got this mission statement, and it should look strangely familiar for those that are familiar with the Agile Manifesto. So we are uncovering better ways of producing valuable working in the bold or the replacement words. Agile transformations by doing it and helping others to do it through the Agile Mentoring Program, a self-organizing, self-division framework. So 
that's that's the coalition vision. So what this is about is us teaching people so that they can teach others. You see an animation. That's what we jump to uh, for that animation. Uh, in the agile mentoring program, there is um, it's a pretty broad uh, spectrum of courses. Uh, the vision is very broad. Every role that's impacted by an agile transformation is covered. And the one that we're going to talk about tonight is the leadership track, which is the one that's highlighted. With that said, um, a lot of times people say, so you're selling something. And I've got one of my clients here, actually, who did buy something, but he knows this is free. We give it away for free. So we give you the framework, we give you the syllabus, we, we give you everything that you need to be able to do this on your own. Because, and people are like, why? And if you've done the natural transformation, just raise your hand. If you're involved in one or done one. All right, and if you, you think that that's going perfectly, leave your hand up and keep them up. Keep them up for that. <laughs> if you think they're going perfectly, then leave them up, otherwise put them down. Okay, so I've never, when I've done that exercise, I've never had a hand stay up. So all, virtually all agile transformations fail. So there's a, a movie um, called Network. Anybody seen Network? This is from 1977, so it's really old. You remember it, okay? So the, the guy, he's tired of things going badly in the world. And he, he leans out the a window and he says, I'm as mad as hell and I'm not going to take it anymore. So I'm tired of agile transformations going badly. And this is why we give this away for free. So with that said, um, when we go out to do transformations, managers, uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, come to me and they say that, that they're concerned. And they, they've got a, a question. I always hear this. What do you think that question is? If you've seen the presentation before, don't say it, but what's the number one question that managers wonder about? Anyone? It is, do I have a job anymore? is as bad as that, and it's at least, how's my role changed? And the answer is the role's changed a lot, if you want to do that, that job well. So with that said, what uh, we're going to be covering tonight is uh, a very um, memorable way for you to do everything from make your organization go faster, to make it more engaging, more fun, and we're going to give you a model for doing that and taking that back to work with you. All right, so with that said, now we're going to have a little bit of fun. So Agile managers form the environment for successful transformation. So I'll show you a picture, and I'm going to ask you what's going on in the picture. So what do you think is going on in this first picture? What is it? They're empowered. They probably do, yes. But it starts with an F. They're having fun. So this is, I, I like to ask this question. Where you work, is it, is it safe to have fun? Or do you have to use safe words like, uh, we're really after employee engagement? You know what I mean? Um, in fact, I, I was at a client recently and they said, they said, yeah, you can't use the fun word here because it's not really business-like. I'm like, oh, really? That's interesting. And you'll see why that's especially interesting because it's very business-like. The next one, what is this? Is a really big middle school. So, um, this is part of what a successful agile leader does: is they are all about being in the chain of uh, escalation for removing obstacles. What is this next one? I heard gold. It is gold, but it's. I heard. I heard it is reward. It is reward. And notice this is rewarding the team. So while it's okay to still reward the individual, we want to change the model to be incenting team behavior. So that's the, the R. And the last one, this guy made a recent reappearance. What is this guy? No. Learning and I think I heard mentoring. So this is mentoring and coaching the team. So that's four. And we're going to dig into each one of those letters. That's going to be the exercise that we do throughout the evening. So uh, with that said, I'm going to introduce, uh, I've got, I think all nine of the facilitators uh, came in today. So if you're a facilitator, raise your hand. I'll 
show the first block here. So we've got Carla, Chris, David, Danny, and Amelia, and James, Jason, and Sasha, and <laughs> cool. All right, so each station, and where's Carla? Carla, if you would come up and illustrate for where are you going to do this, Carla? So Carla's going to just point this out, what we're doing with these stations. So we've got stations on tables. We've got stations on walls. So I'm Vanna. <laughs> so basically what you're going to be doing is, is that um, in various times when uh, Brian tells us to, you're going to get together in your groups and you're going to come up with all the things that uh, is fun to you. What does fun mean to you? And um, what do you think would help you know, your team and engage your team with fun? The next thing is, is the same thing. You're going to be, uh, when we get called up again, you're going to start identifying the obstacles, the various obstacles that are in your way. Um, maybe even a boulder rolled into your parking lot. That could be it. Um, next is rewards and then mentor. Thank you, Carl. Sure. All right, so uh, we'll have multiple stations uh, around the room. And with that said, uh, using our model, we're going to teach you how to teach others. Uh, the animation is kind of jittery here, but you get the idea. The, the point is uh, pay it forward. So as I mentioned before, you're, the, the agrometric area is to teach. Like I will teach a cohort at a time. It's got about seven people in it. And after each one of those people are taught, then they will go on and teach others. So the animation, animation. It's kind of jittery. Got to figure out what's going on with that. But you get the idea, right? So it eventually becomes what we call a learning organization. So anybody heard of that learning organization? Anybody heard of that phrase? It sounds like a cool thing, right? I've never seen a learning organization at all. So what what we're doing with the Apple Mentoring Program, we actually are seeing. It's, it's pretty cool stuff. All right. So fun work environment. This is the first one up. So the, the point is, if you're a leader. And if you have uh, influence over your work environment just in general, we want you to have uh, to make that uh, work environment a fun place to be. So um, to read out the, the paragraph, because there's something I want to emphasize here, leadership is responsible, they are responsible, for creating an agile ecosystem that is fun. You need to create a compelling, thriving workplace where people want to come into work every day. Does that make sense? This is quite a responsibility for you to create an ecosystem where your people look forward to coming into work every day. I don't know about you, but I'm currently, with my current contract, um, I, I like that. I'm making post-its. Uh, I, I wake up and I'll make a note. I, I want to try this tomorrow, right? So that's where I am currently. But I've also been in a place where I dread anybody been there, dread coming into work every day. Oh, yeah. Um, Gallup had a, a book called First Break All the Rules, and the, the summary, there was like a tagline that went, went with that, and that was, it's the manager's stupid. It's all about the manager. The manager creates the environment. Has anybody heard the phrase, people don't leave companies, they leave managers? Right? This is true. Alright, so that's an introduction to fun. Now, I mentioned there's a business aspect of having fun in the workplace. That's really compelling. So, happy employees, uh, the, this is based on uh, some metrics that Jeff Sutherland wrote in his book, um, Doing Twice the Work in Half the Time, um, which is chapter seven, I think. So, happy employees, he's uh, done the stats, and um, so the productive employees, uh, productivity is way up, profitability is uh, improved, sales are up. Innovation is dramatically up. Staff turnover is reduced. Sick leave is better. And there's less burnout. So, now I'm going to tell you the story, what I call the, uh, the tale of two cities. So last year I had a client. And uh, one, there were these two senior vice presidents. One was in Indianapolis, the other was in India. Uh, and so that was just fun because of the India being in both parts of the, the city. So it's tale of two cities. So in Indianapolis, I came in and I gave this, uh, this form presentation. When, I, when I'm talking about fun, this, the senior vice president who had been there for 30 years, after I went through right after the slide about the stats, right? So this slide about the stats, I said, so it's important to have fun at work. 
And he said to me, Brian, I don't have fun at work, and I don't care if anybody else does either. It's like, wow, should I just leave now, right? So um, that in contrast to when I went to India, uh, the senior vice president there, everybody loved coming into work every day. It was all stats that he just saw. So I saw the difference. And I, when I was talking to that leader and his leadership team, they're like, oh, this is great. What else can we do to improve? So just a dramatic uh, change between the two cities, right? So the anti pattern is back to Indianapolis. So I asked one of the people, what is it like to work here? Because it, it feels bad. It feels really toxic. And he said, Brian, it seems like I'm in the ocean, and I'm like drowning every day. And then a shark comes along. <laughs> and every day is just trying to survive. It's like, wow. So this is the difference that it makes in terms of leadership and having fun just as one of those dimensions. All right, so now we've got the facilitators that we identified earlier, uh, identified early, earlier and uh, we're going to have them go to the different um, panels. And we're going to start going through the F, the O, the R, the M. We started talking about the, the F. So um, if there's only two, like two people, like you guys, two at the table, you probably want to join with another. We're going to shoot to have about seven plus or minus two at each table. And so we're going to take uh, six minutes for you to brainstorm. Your facilitators want to lead you through a conversation about how to have more fun in your workplace. So I'll start the timer, and your facilitator will lead you through the exercise.
that's what we mean by this obstacle remover. So there's some fun things about uh, obstacle uh, removal. And that is on, uh, so on the next slide. So I was uh, recently, um, last year, large financial client in San Francisco. And uh, they had a large consulting company in there and uh, they were really struggling with Apple. And I implemented just one, one thing, that is whenever an impediment came up, whenever an obstacle came up, to shoot to have that resolved in not 24 hours, but 48 hours. So I, I'm here to tell you, this is just anecdotal, this is related to, this is a, a stat out of uh, Sutherland's book also. But in 48 hours, over seven sprints, that team tripled their velocity. So at first when you see something like this, if you can resolve your obstacles in less than 24 hours or double your velocity, that might be like, really? I don't know if that's true. I'm here to tell you, with a large, stodgy financial organization that was started in the 1800s, you might be able to figure it out. Um, 48 hours, they tripled their velocity. So th this is very, this is very, uh, very powerful to do where, wherever you're doing your consulting or wherever you're working. All right, so there's something, has anybody heard of an obstacle board? Raise your hand if you've heard of an obstacle board. And raise your hand if that was at Cisco. <laughs> Cisco uh, was where I first learned this. And they're, they're in the process of relaunching Obstacle Board 2.0. Uh, so they're doing some refinements. But an obstacle board, the way this works, is it's a physical board. It can be something like just a, a piece of uh, flip chart paper. The idea is once it gets out of the team, past the scrum master into the leader, each each leader will have, let's say that this is the leader's door, they'll put a flip chart on the leader's door, and it'll look something like this. And so you'll see, I'll, I'll uh, do a little animation here that, that uh, talks uh, through each of, each of the sections. So in the, at the uh, top there, any new obstacle that comes in from the team, it goes into the, the new section, right? And note that this is very informal. This is something that's just hand created. So the next section is uh, obstacles return to the team. So if the manager is not able to resolve it and then they want it to go back to the team to be resolved, then it goes back to the return to team section. Assigned is uh, if the, the manager says, okay, yes, this is something that I need to uh, do something with, then they put it into their assigned section. Last but not least is the obstacle smash section. So food for thought, use a, an obstacle board. This can be something that's very helpful because it's a large uh, visible uh, information radiator kind of thing about your obstacles. And I can tell you, leaders don't like to have obstacles on the board. So it's, uh, it's very motivating from that perspective as well. Um, this last section is just showing some of the, the sections that are in the obstacle board. All right. With that said, we're going to have another six minute session on everything from you can do an obstacle board, how you might uh, work through that, and I'll be going through the, the tables and answering any questions about that if you'd like. But any other way that you can especially figure out how that you can get obstacle uh, resolved in less than 24 hours. So with that said, so we're back up. So continue if you want to, but you've got a break for about 15 minutes. We'll be back here at uh, seven minutes to uh, five minutes to seven, and uh, then we'll have our lightning round. So I'll come to you. You can find me, give me your name and and the experience you want to share. Just uh, just a topic. All right, and uh, also take a look at that. It's hiding there because we have Las Vegas and I um, there. So if you're looking for a job or if you have a job offering. Uh, for for this forum, this is the paper for you. Make uh, use of the sticky notes that you have. Also, you don't have to wait till the end to give us a feedback. So there's a feedback here. What do we start doing? What should we stop? What should we do? What should we do more or less? So take time to do that and uh, take pictures. But I'm going to take all these pictures anyway and post it on the event. Also, I'm recording there. If you notice, uh, most of the recording is for the speaker uh, here. But that will be available on the um, on the YouTube channel that we have. The YouTube channel name is Save Us the uh, Meetup. So can value as your friend and leadership. So if you go there, there are about seven uh, events already posted there. So 
If you want to earn free BDUs, free SEUs, whatever, you can do that too over there. So just subscribe for me and then uh, start taking benefit of that. All right, so we'll come back uh, five minutes to seven. We have four. How about this? Great, great, lovely. I love the participation. So let's get started with the first one. Uh, this is by James, and the topic is collaborative communication for leaders. I wonder, James. Yeah, you would need that because I'm recording. That helps. Oh yeah. Hi, my name is James Prieto. I am an agile coach, uh, currently uh, contracting for Cisco. Uh, one of my passions is collaborative communications, also known as nonviolent communication, which I find is a uh, is an essential skill for leadership. Um, you know, we talk about how agile is really based on uh, valuing individuals and interactions over processes and tools, but we don't really talk about well, how do we make that happen? How do we make that real? So, um, I guess uh, if you're interested in finding out more, I can facilitate workshops for your leadership team or for your team itself. Um, and one, one of the things that I do to help build trust in my teams, especially when I'm scrum mastering, is I spend the first 15 minutes just getting to know each other, allowing people to have a check-in. Um, and basically, it builds trust on the team. Um, and it's just as simple as, uh, how are you? And the one rule is it can't be about work when you're checking in. How are you? And you know, you're learning about people's families or kids uh, and everything that's non-work related. And I found that uh, through time, that does build trust uh, within your team and it allows uh, all the really cool things to happen. So as you get to know each other, uh, as people, then you tend to collaborate more. So uh, that's my little nugget for you. And if you're interested in more, uh, please find me after. Thank you. Whoa. All right. Thank you. All right. Next one up is the, is a very catchy topic. It says XP Plus. Scott, coming up. Now. Okay, thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Scott Larbo. I'm a Scrum Master, also a contractor at Cisco. I'm so, <laughs> trying to trend here tonight. Um, a show of hands, who's heard of XP or Extreme Programming? Okay, so pretty good, pretty good knowledge. And two big parts of that are pair programming. Who's heard of pair programming? Uh, pretty good. And continuous integration? Yeah. Okay, cool. Excellent. So, someone told me about this a little bit, how these came about. And the XP guys were just looking at a lot of major projects out there that were successful. And they said, wow, this team did more code reviews than the other team. They had a lot of success. So they kind of came up with the idea, well, let's turn the knob up. And instead of doing you know, lots of code reviews, let's have two software engineers sit together. And they will work together all day long. So basically, they're continuously code reviewing all day long. So that was interesting. They looked at something successful. And they turned the knob up to see if they could accelerate it or leverage it. Uh, the same happened with their continuous integration. You know, a lot of companies just deploy monthly every six months. So people started deploying, you know, weekly and then daily. And I'm like, wow, this is pretty good. Can we deploy, you know, twice a day? Can we deploy hourly? Uh, now I saw a statistic that Amazon deploys like every 11 seconds, which is you know, pretty, pretty cutting edge. So once again, they took a concept. They said, can we turn the knob up on that? You know, can we leverage that? So I was kind of thinking about it. Can that be used for other things? And tonight, the presentation, I was late. They came here and they talked about, well, if you can remove an impediment in 48 hours, you know, that really helps. Remove it in 24 hours. Well, if you open an impediment before lunch, could you fix it by the end of the day? You know, I was trying to think the same thing that was successful for extreme programmers. Could this be applied to other things that we're doing that are successful? So, so kind of thinking about it maybe on retrospectives. They're pretty awesome. But sometimes you think of something and say, oh, I'm going to talk about this in two weeks. Maybe you should have a few minutes to go to your scrum meeting where you can say, hey, there's something I want to bring up. I, I didn't want to wait. Um, so I don't know what my time is, but I feel pretty good like I got my message across. Thanks for your patience. Yeah. All right.
great nugget there. And the third one is uh, it's a meditation teacher. So a couple months ago, we had another meditation teacher coming here, and we loved her. Um, so this is another one. So I think there's, there's some pattern I see, right? I mean, there's something to do with agility and meditation together. So let's, uh, let's uh, get, get to know more about it. Attention versus awareness and how to listen by Chris. Chris. Thank you. So I am a Agile coach and meditation teacher in training. And one of the talks that I give is the three benefits of mindfulness in Agile knowledge work environments. And so one of them that I wanted to share with you is listening better. Who's heard of the three levels of listening? Okay. Now, who here is interested in meditation or meditates? Probably a few meditators in the room. So the three levels of listening are, the first level of listening is I'm quote unquote listening to you, but I'm mostly thinking about the thoughts going on in my head. The second one is I'm listening to you and I'm paying 100% attention to you. And the third one is I'm paying 100% attention to you, but I have this wide open awareness of everything that's kind of going on in the room, your nonverbal communication. So I would like to posit that despite our intention to listen to somebody acutely, we don't have much ability to do so. Meditation trains us to do that better. And one of the ways that it does that, and not a lot of teachers will teach you this, is that there is a distinction between attention and awareness that I'd like to share with you. Attention is like this focused vision. It's like this eye-to-eye -eye communication, this highly detailed analytical, that's what's happening when you're paying attention to somebody. Awareness is this broad, broad peripheral kind of vision kind of thing, right? And so I would posit that you don't actually get stable attention through developing more attention. You get stable attention on somebody by developing your awareness. So if you're a meditator and you're sitting, don't pay attention to your object of meditation, whether it's your breath, or your abdomen, or your mantra, or your visualization, exclusively. Leave some space in your meditation to keep in this awareness. Because it's actually that awareness of the sights and the sounds and the smells and the things going on in your body without actually thinking about them or getting distracted them, but just allowing them to be in your peripheral awareness will actually make your attention much stronger. And this is actually what's going to make it possible for you to operate at those higher levels of listening. And so if you're interested in meditation and some of the other benefits, come hit me up. get us into some kind of meditation, but maybe next time, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's next one, uh, let's talk about uh, some of the PMI Silicon Valley events. This is a great uh, cross-pollination if you look at it uh, from the perspective of, you know, uh, one nonprofit leveraging the other nonprofit in terms of marketing, plus David is our person who uh, was really good at uh, the Agile as the Agile mentor. Uh, plus, he is an amazing, amazing long-term uh, volunteer for PMISB, just like me. Uh, I welcome you. Thank you. Meditation. How about if I use one minute of my uh, three minutes uh, for twenty seconds? Everybody have a good stretch, please. Yes. This is part of fun. <laughs> right? Yeah. And yeah, we thank you, Brad, for for and PMI. No, it's not the dark side of the moon. <laughs> it is here. And PMI sleep on many chapters, San Francisco chapter. I'm a member of both. I've been, uh, thanks, Ryan. Uh, I can, I've been uh, volunteering there. Uh, Silicon Valley chapter has, for your information, the highest number of events in nation, if I'm not wrong. I think we are the second largest chapter in nation. Take advantage of free events, uh, free. But frankly, ten dollar is free. Get in sleep on that. We have a number of leading, leading uh, 
trainers. For ten for ten dollars, we can have uh, we can bargain. We can have better bargain than that. Check out kmisv.org. Check out San Francisco chapter and join us. It is uh, we have a lot of uh, agilists there, a lot of coaches there. Join us. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. All right, so Brian, you come back with your troop and get going with the remaining portion. And I really look forward to the form, the other parts of our arm. arm. Yeah. seems to be done quite a bit, and I, I've done that a couple times, and that works very well. How about movie night, by the way? Have there been many movie nights? Um, what's that uh, thing, uh, Mystery Theater 3000, anybody know what I'm talking about? So I did one with um, some space movie, and everybody would just make these random comments as the movie was playing. It was a blast, so it was a lot of, a lot of fun, and uh, the team really enjoyed that. Um, so if that works for the, the uh, team to do uh, something physical, like uh, bowling or hiking, then those are very traditional kind of things. With that said, I want to bring up uh, Mr. Chesney. So uh, Simon, he has uh, something from Jurgen's book, Managing for Happiness. And I'm going to, um, let's see, so Anu, do we just activate? Sure, it, it is. Uh, uh, right in there. Uh, okay. Let's see the switch. Okay. So, Simon, tell us about what uh, is going on with uh, Western Digital Ranging from your innovative reward system, plus you could do the Agile Mentoring Program. Just love to hear some of your thoughts there. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm a coach with uh, Western Digital, with the Data Center Systems. Uh, business unit. We're about nine, ten months into an agile transformation. It's, it's, uh, it's going pretty well. Um, so uh, first of all, I'll talk about the agile mentoring program. So we, we started our agile transformation with one coach in-house and a master coach kind of at, at the company level. Uh, Alex Ball, uh, some of you may have heard of or uh, met Alex. And, um, and myself as the coach. Um, and what we did is we invited kind of thought leaders uh, from throughout the organization, 12 of them, um, to become uh, change agents. Um, and uh, we provided additional training for them. Uh, we're using the Scaled Agile Framework within the, the Data Center Systems Business Unit. So all of the change agents had the opportunity to, to get their SBC Scaled Agile Program Consultant certifications, and, and, and they felt pretty good about that uh, in terms of their own career growth. Um, so that was back in about a year ago. We, we had them go through that program. And um, we chartered the group uh, with support from leadership, and then the group um, were, were very instrumental in making a lot of decisions about the change in our the change from our previous waterfall processes to our, our agile processes and, and the way the different ways we were working. Um, so then, about five or six months in, I suppose maybe a bit less than that, four, four or five months in, um, we wanted to bring more opportunity for the. Agile change agents to begin to develop them themselves more as coaches for the organization because we don't have external coaches 
uh, within the organization. And the scrum masters that we have in the organization, many of them are scrum masters for the first time. They only had a couple of days of training to become scrum masters in the first place. So we, um, I looked around and um, encountered Brian's offer in terms of the Agile Mentoring Program, and we engaged with Brian to get his help in rolling that out for the change agents. So for the last, it's probably four months now, four and a half months now, yeah. <laughs> uh, we've had the change agents in two cohorts, a US cohort and an India and Belgium cohort, six people in each group, meeting once a week with a, a coach that Brian provided us with as a mentor, working through the syllabus of the Agile mentoring program to working towards becoming certified Agile change agents, another certification that's kind of accretive to the change agents in terms of their career standing and their, their resumes and so on. And um, where we have the, both cohorts coming up to taking their exams shortly and uh, it's, it's been a really uh, constructive, well-received uh, program. Um, each of the change agents has been taking maybe about half a day a week for their study. We have a 90 minute session as part of that half a day a week with the external mentor. And we get homework and we get quizzes that we have to pass each week uh, and uh, background reading. So, um, so that's, the, that's the Agile Mentoring Program and our experience with it. We're intending, based on our experience with the change agents, to adopt some of the other programs for product owners, scrum masters, and managers, uh, perhaps during the, uh, the latter part of this year. Now, in terms of the rewards, um, I, I read this book, uh, Managing for Happiness, in fact, I bought 20 copies and gave out copies to all of the managers and, and other people in the organization. Did it make them happy? Hmm? Did it make them happy? Um, <laughs> it's, well, we're one of those organizations where we we think in terms of engagement rather than happiness. Right. Because happiness seems a little frivolous <laughs> and engagement right. seems like it's important even when people are kind of serious. Right. Um, so one of the things we're doing is we are in, we're measuring engagement. We, we have questions around um, uh, autonomy, mastery, and purpose, um, and uh, whether you'd recommend your team for uh, uh, for your friends to join your team if an opportunity arises. And we, we're surveying every two weeks. We're su surveying all the engineers, all all the people on the Scrum teams, um, to get a picture of where they are, and, and we share that in the organisation. Now, in terms of rewards, um, we are heading towards, we've made a proposal and um, we're heading towards deploying a system on top of some infrastructure which I think is called Global Force, uh, which is an HR system that um, is being adopted. In Western Digital, where we've been integrating Western Digital, HGST, Hitachi Global Storage Technologies, and SanDisk, which we acquired. So three companies merging over the last several years to become one large company uh, with a variety of different HR systems and reward systems. Um, so it turns out that HR is uh, willing to, for us to try an experiment and using this Global Force platform to enable the experiment. And the experiment comes from this book, Managing for Happiness. So the model here is that everyone in the organization is going to get a certain number of points uh, every quarter that they can give away to others. Right? And they, they give away their points as thank yous for uh, behaviors that they feel are supportive of the agile environment and particularly collaborative behaviors around teamwork. Um, and then at the end of the quarter, those points are going to be monetized. They're going to turn into cash or cash equipment. So um, uh, along with the uh, kind of giving the points to someone else, um, we're setting up a notice board where the thank you for which the points are being given gets broadcast to the organization. So creating visibility for acknowledging others. And then at a later point, that'll turn into some level of financial reward. So that's an experiment we're about to embark uh, on. Very cool. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so 
we'll just pause for a moment. If anybody has any questions about that, um, when we've done this before, some people have had some follow-up questions. So are there any questions about what uh, Simon is doing at Western Digital? Yeah, I'm actually going to add a little bit of a nuance to it, because it, it, Sanders had a, a program called the High Five Program, which was somewhat similar to this. And we're differentiating our next experiment from, the, from that high five in the, in the previous system, individual contributors could make a little gift of thank you, and managers could make a big fat gift of thank you, and senior managers could make an even larger gift. And we want to take that aspect of the disproportionate weighting of manager thank yous out of the equation for the system that we're trialing. So everyone will get the same kind of ability to recognize one another uh, within that system. So that's just one of the nuances that we're introducing. Yeah, a variety of experiments. Nice, a variety of experiments. Yeah. Very good. Cool. All right, if there's no question about that, thank you, sir. Thanks, Brian. Mm -hmm. There is a question, looks like. There is a question. Oh, oh okay. I was just going to uh, some people talk about rewarding teams versus rewarding individuals, and I wondered your thoughts on that. Yeah, we, so we're trying to set the system up so that individuals can reward individuals, individuals can reward teams, teams can reward individuals, and teams can reward teams. Um, so that, we, that's the desired outcome, and we may achieve it just by telling people to collaborate together when they want to reward, uh, when a team wants to reward another team. The, the individual to team piece, we're still figuring that out, whether there's a bucket for a team that the team will then get um, uh, that, um, that monetization or, or equivalent work uh, for the team as a whole. Mm -hmm. I have a... So I have an anecdote from a nonprofit that was assisting in a uh, crisis zone, an earthquake zone, I believe. And the nonprofit had the crazy idea of coming in and they would pay somebody's neighbors to help them rebuild somebody's home. And then they would do this in turn from neighbor to neighbor to neighbor. And it actually destroyed their community. Because what happened is that it took this community that would have done that for free anyway as part of their social fabric, and they commodify it. Yeah, we're, we're, so that's a great, a great observation. Um, and, and in general terms, the risk is taking an intrinsic motivation and converting it to an extrinsic motivation and making it look like work. And um, so we're aware of that um, potential. Um, and so some of that's to do with how significant the rewards are um, and some of it's to do with, for us, about broadcasting the fact that you're acknowledging people. So um, we'll see how it goes. We're treading lightly, but I acknowledge that as a, a really good observation. Um, I add one more thing. We do innovation events, and we just did an innovation event last week, and uh, there was a discussion at the end when, we, when people did the demos from the end. So our innovation events, everyone gets the opportunity to spend two or three days a quarter working on any project that they want to with anyone else that they want to, and the only constraint is they have to show their work at the end. So we had a demo where people showed their work at the end, and there was a discussion uh, about um, acknowledging the kind of the most exciting projects, and one of the managers suggested rewarding, and there was a, a, actually a very healthy conversation about how we do we don't want to turn that fun innovation event into more work because there's a serious monetary reward associated with it, but rather. Fueling the intrinsic motivation might be, and what in fact we're, we're planning to do, is take the most promising innovation projects and figure out how to productize them. So again, I think that resonates with what we have to say. Thanks,
right, uh, so we're going to do a segment on uh, brainstorming for rewarding. Let me invite you to uh, kind of divide this up into two pieces because we're talking about continuing to reward individuals, but especially having an emphasis on incenting team behavior, so rewarding teams. That's it. Put another six minutes on. So okay, we should back on. Um, referral kind of programs, as an example. And by the way, um, 
when it says do I have a best friend at work, best friend is defined as someone that you're willing to share a secret with. So it's not, you know, BFF in necessarily a traditional kind of way, but it's someone that you're simply willing to share a secret with. So Food for Thought uses uh, the Q12 to increase uh, employee engagement and to show that you genuinely care about your workforce, your people. All right, so um, going into the, uh, the mentoring for the different roles, so we were talking about, uh, Simon was talking about the different roles. So the Agile Change Agent is one of the courses, one of the ones that we'll be launching probably next is going to be product owners. Ultimately one for architects, t uh, teams is already there as well. And leadership is uh, what you're seeing with form is the beginning of the leadership track. Um, if you haven't uh, checked out these books, check out these books uh, for each of those roles. Those are all uh, great. Management 3.0 is the successor to the Managing by Happiness book that Simon was referring to earlier. All right, um, so we're going to spend another six minutes and we're starting to wind down to we'll, uh, have readouts at the end. We're going to have another six minutes to talk about how you can best mentor and coach your teams. Don't leave out the personal part. Facilitators should be So without looking at, at the tables or around the room, who has the courage to say what form stands for? Margaret? Fun, obstacles, and learn, and Nice, very good. Awesome. Excellent, very good. So um, the, the, remember that the pay it forward model, so we're, we're, we shoot to give you something that's memorable, that you take back with you and teach other people. So that's good. All right, and uh, so it's report out time. So not your facilitator, but someone else at your table. Identify someone, get a volunteer, or uh, you to report out, but have a couple of minutes to talk about the people just start reading posts. So you, you identify one person that is your spokesperson, okay? and then identify like what you what really resonate with on your F, your O, your R, and your F. So I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to identify that and to start looking through like something that maybe not not going on the road, but not going on the edge. And uh, actually, I'm gonna give you three minutes to identify the person and to just identify which things that you want to talk about. Okay. So with that, yeah. Like, good. And when she says halt or has some kind of sound, then you need to hashtag respect and start. Okay. Because people tend to just go on. All right, so who would like to be greatest and be the first table to report out? And we should do the microphone. Testing, testing, testing. Hello? Who would like to go first? All right, cool. Save your name. Now, can you get two minutes? I'm going to start the call. We're going to talk about the presentation. We're going to take away another presentation. Go ahead. So we started off with, um, you know, first one was fun. I was a late for it, which is kind of helping me out. And to be honest, we started off, it was a little cliche. It was like, do you want to do this? We explored together. Um, but one came up, it was kind of normal, but I'm going to do it on the spot. He said that he thought of fun as something that he tries to do continuously throughout the day. It's not just start an event. He will do whatever he can to ask someone how they're doing, make small talk with someone. He just tries to incorporate that into his daily routine. So for us, that was the one that kind of stuck out from, from all our conversation. Um, the other one we talked to, I'm just going to talk about two of the four, so that's all I've got, is the obstacle. And I'm going to do this one backwards. Our solution for this obstacle was, well, we have to fix Silicon Valley. Is that fixable? The was no. Uh, but that had to do with just the velocity of change in Valley where people are in their jobs, where they sort of get up to speed, and then they leave. And often it's the scrum master or project manager. It's kind of holding things together, you know, the fingers in the dying and the toes in the dying. So for them to be able to go chase down impediments in car when they're in this really volatile environment where people are coming and going, and sometimes <clears throat> so, those are kind of the ones that we talked that sort of 
know, our conversations are recapping the kind of stuff. We couldn't resist the line about fixing some of the problems. That's excellent. Thank you. Who would like to go next? And we'll pass the mic. We can or we can self organize, but no. I'm Ashish. So, no. Uh, it's not the same that I need to do that, right? I can just say on my own. Yeah, yeah this what, whatever your group thought was really resonating. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I feel that when you know what to do as a whole, we are very run gen program, so you know what to do with that action. And then all these four factors as you collaborate together to achieve that target. So it's easy when you know what, to, what we are looking for. The first one is fun. So we will have an environment where people are going to say in the morning, I have to go to the office. Mm -hmm. Not like, oh, again. So that's a very challenging one, but I believe that you can build it. So, uh, and then the most important factor is that if you know the individual the team, their weakness, strength, and to work on their weakness, strength, strength. So, in different ways. Uh, I'm not going to go going by the points. And if we can go with that plan and program, we can also overcome the obstacle which comes in. It could be different categories, technical, other resource constraints, and so on. If we have a proper planning in place, and if we identify, prioritize, assign, track, that can be eliminated. So that is the most important part. <clears throat> and most importantly, we need to have a clear, uh, open environment so that people can share even if someone does an mistake, I can take an example from, I know an instance when someone deleted a huge amount of data in production, but I work with a team which, I mean, it's been told, if you do even a mistake, come share before I even know, before I hear from the world. So the moment the, the, the person came to the leader and appraised about it, and he took a good reason. So that is, I think, a key to success that someone should not be scared of, rather should come before the world comes to the leader. Hi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, it's going to be a good sign. Uh, and and really it should factor in the annual review and so on, so that people can request to do more. And for uh, in, in terms of mentoring, I think one point is important, like when we uh, get new members, we should have proper training in the world over there, so that we can feel as part of the team and take challenges from there. Thank you. Okay, uh, I will present the needs of 
part of the from the, all, everybody here because it, it was a big step forward for him to speak. Okay, my first time here. And what uh, I understand what the um, priority you uh, made observation can be by the different. And uh, fun means for each person something different, somebody motivated, uh, like many people motivate trust and uh, com a good community and uh, for fun, share with the same goal and uh, also be, for some people it's uh, important to be on a mission, what you do is something very important in your life. And um, also for obstacles, I remember. It's uh, um, very important to have communication and sharing information mm -hmm. between each other and the departments. And um, Um, also provide uh, education to obstacles and yeah. go to the rewards. Also for rewards, also different uh, for each person is different. Somebody like recognition, be recognized. And uh, somebody uh, like to get a free training. Also. And for many people it's uh, important to get money, more money. Mm -hmm. and Time. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Um, you brought, brought up a really good point that I uh, forgot to mention. And uh, in terms of rewards, so public recognition for some people is like what they care about the most. And other people, it's the most mortifying thing that you could do to bring them up in front of people and then publicly recognize them. So you need to know your people. So it's a great, great call to have there. Cool. And who's left? Who's left? Who's not going yet? Okay, so we have a mic. All right. We have a mic. Thank you, Richard. Hi. Um, What's your name? My name is Weber. Um, I'm a for Visa. Um, so we came across some interesting points and for fun. Just to give you a little bit of a context. My friend here said that he has to go to meetings, and uh, some of these meetings are not fun because, you know, his boss has his own agendas. So we came across um, a lean coffee, which is an interesting concept, um, where everybody has their own topic which they want to discuss in a meeting, and most of the important topics or the ones that everybody, which are more important, get pre uh, prevalence. So. They get discussed first, and the others get eliminated. So that makes the meeting fun and informative, as well as useful. So that's uh, the fun part. Um, for obstacles, we came across uh, just the simple things and uh, making obstacles visible to the entire team. Uh, sometimes just defining the problem is the important thing to um, define solutions. Mm -hmm. um, for rewards, again, a simple solution like acknowledging people uh, spontaneously whenever um, they do something good, rather than waiting for the project to end and then giving acknowledgement, um, rather than that just going along and encouraging people. And uh, for mentoring, um, we, we believe that trusting people with problems um, and letting them find their own solutions is uh, 
is at times good. And you know, you can always watch what they're doing and mentor them around the way, but just trusting them that they they are capable of solving their own problems is uh, other four points that we thought were important. And I thought these these are three side made notes. Cool. That's engaging. Nice product for being very good. We have one more. So we have one more table up here. Okay. Let's pass the mic. Icebreaker in the conversation, they could be anything from like where you have remote teams where you're just on Skype or something, where you know, what kind of shoes are you wearing today? You know, just something to like break the ice, or if someone came back from vacation, you know, ask what the highlights of your trip were. Um, and just the permission to be silly and goofy and bring your, your real self to work itself. Mm -hmm. um, as far as obstacles, um, we talked about again communication being uh, paramount there and having someone be the owner um, even if it's even if it's uh, given to the scrum master or another team to solve someone has to follow through and sometimes just the the calling it an obstacle or impediment or blocker itself can be a, a mental block and not to use that as a stopping point but you know also look at solutions and brainstorm around solutions uh, as far as reward a lot of us uh, we're intrinsically motivated and we thought uh, work itself should be its own reward. If we're working on rewarding, you know, work and with good people in a good environment, that alone was, um, you know, enough. Um, and our mentorship and coaching, um, Eric mentioned a really good one where everyone is, is my mentor. You can learn and share insights and experience, um, experiences among peer groups and among like just other people that also just have more experience mm -hmm. in that field or whatever. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. That's everybody, right? Thanks, so. Care about teammates. Yeah, that's an important aspect. 
What else?
He's going to uh, spare the evening with us right here, March 12th. So we cannot change that date. Let's make it happen. I want to see all of you there um, at the event as well. And before you go, I urge you, if you have talked about um, the great points that you learned today, that's the takeaway. And that takeaway board is waiting for you. Right? So write down what you have just expressed. Share that love with everyone here, as well as with the people who have, couldn't join us. They, some of the people couldn't join us because of the traffic, right? They went home. And they're looking forward to this recording, as well as those takeaways as a picture. So thank you so much for, for being kind to uh, everyone and for being here tonight. Thank you.